Everything good, everything bright, everything holy, everything right, everything worthy, all that I should. And all is well, cause I'm gonna dwell on everything good. Testify for my dad tonight. He, you know, he is 84 years old and still trucking <laughs> and uh, having ministry out at the truck stop. And I remember when I was a boy, I'd turn on those professional wrestlers and uh, one of them uh, was one, his name was Sam, or Bruno San Martino. How many remember him? When I just read the news, he passed away and he was 82 years old. I thought, dear Lord, Dad, you didn't even wrestle when you, <laughs> you lived longer. You lived longer than he did. <laughs> That's the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. It pays to serve the Lord yes, it does. and put Him first. And uh, I just can't praise Him enough for His hand of mercy upon our lives. Hallelujah. As we serve God. And put him first. Praise God. He is so good to us. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. There's a scripture, Isaiah chapter 53, and I don't think I'll hold you too long tonight. We don't know what'll happen, but just to leave some thoughts in our head tonight about God's word and his plan. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah chapter 53. Starting at verse 10. Praise the Lord. Amen. Scripture says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. I just want you to think of that. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. Think of that. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear the iniquities. Bear their iniquities. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we ask you, Jesus, yes. to help us tonight. Yes. And Lord, we just want to give you all praise and glory for the plan of salvation. And God, for your love tonight, help us, Lord, never forget what you have done for us. And Lord, for being our advocate, our in-between, yes. Jesus. Hallelujah, between Hallelujah. us and the Father. I ask you, Lord, that you just hide me behind the cross. And Lord, let the seed of God's word find that yes, good ground. Jesus. I rebuke the enemy of our souls. Lord, I ask that freedom would be in this room and we'd be filled with your Holy Ghost. Yes. Lord, let healing virtue flow in this room. God, you see our needs. God, the desires of our hearts come upon us, I pray, yes. with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. To a worldly mind, a sentence like this, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Mm. Really, would not make sense if you don't understand what happened here. And to someone in the world, they may say, what kind of God is that? That it pleased him to see his son bleed and die and be really torn to shreds and to allow his face to be turned, to allow man to place their hands upon him to allow the demons of hell to mock him mm. 
I want to tell you something. We don't even understand what Jesus went through. Because it was not when Jesus said, they know not what they do. Boy, was that the truth. Because it wasn't what they were doing. It was what the enemy was allowed to do. And I want to tell you, the devil entered into a many a soul that day as they mocked him and they ridiculed him and they thought of him as very low and they challenged him. Think of how they put a robe upon him like he was a king and they placed the crown of thorns upon his head and they pushed down upon it. And then they beat him on top of the head and blindfolded him and say, prophesy, mm. who hit you? Mm. I want to tell you something. The demons of hell were having a day. Sorry. They were having their time with the son of the living God. And way back when Satan tempted Jesus in the desert, in the wilderness, no doubt Satan was just full of, of glee and, and joy as he saw the demons of hell bring their assault upon him. And yet our God, our Father says it pleased him. How can this be that it pleased God that his son was done this way? Well, what's the answer? Why did it please him? Because of us. <laughs> Think of that. Amen. Because of you. Because of what you needed. Because of the sin that needed washed away out of your life. Because of the healing that needs to take place in your body. That needed to take place, hallelujah, to uh, set you free. Hallelujah. All this, think of the mockings. I think of some of the things we go through in this world. And, you know, no one likes to be belittled. No one likes to be mocked. You know, it doesn't feel good when you're left out of the clique. You know, that's how it was in school, you know. You... Uh, they're just people that thrived on weakness. Mm -hmm. And they saw you were the weak one. And it even goes in kind of into the world of, of the animals, you know, the uh, wild kingdom. The weak ones seem to pass away and fall to the side. Mm -hmm. So, boy, if you showed weakness or anything out of the ordinary, you, you just wore something a little different than your friends. Boy, they pounced on you like you would not believe. And you were made fun of. And those feelings are not well, but oh, aren't they elementary compared to what Jesus went through? Amen. Whatever we suffer, that's why I always tell truck drivers, you know, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, whatever the trial, whatever the tribulation, think of the cross. Think of what Jesus did. Your best friend can betray you. You can find out how they talk bad about you. It can be your closest friend that let you down. And it hurts you. But it would never come close to what was done on the cross. The sickness we suffer in this world. Joel Osteen was just talking the other night. How his mother had gotten cancer and they prayed and she was miraculously healed and she's lived I forget how many years now ever since uh, you know she got her healing she's been in good health and she's pressed on I'm sure she is in her 80s now I'm sure yes. and she looks great and he said you know what but my dad got sick he goes, we didn't pray any less for him. We prayed the same for him as we did mom. It wasn't that we prayed for mom more than him, 
But he, he didn't get his healing. He, he passed on. And he says, I don't understand it all. All I know, we got to put our trust in God. Hallelujah. Whatever that we're facing, hallelujah. We can't compare ourselves to someone else. We just got to have an encounter with God. Though thousands fall all around me, I have to trust my God. He's going to see me through. And I got to realize that He took the mockery. He took the pain. He took the price. It was for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise that I can trade in my sorrows. Yes. I can trade in my sickness. Yes. This was done. The Lord turned His head away from His only begotten Son mm -hmm. that He might take the punishment, the payment, not only for our sins, but for our sickness, for every frailty of man. Yes. For our bad attitudes. <laughs> for what we do wrong. For our lies. For our thefts. Whatever it may be that we find ourselves that we might have gotten into. If we come and repent and call on our God, He is faithful and true to forgive us and to bring us out of sin. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I was reading on in Mark. Chapter 15, and it, starting at verse 16. And God always has a plan and a purpose, doesn't He? This was, in both of my devotions were these scriptures, and Becky asked me to, to speak tonight, and I thought, isn't it something how the, the scriptures just matched up together? talking about his suffering. Verse 16 of Mark 15 says, And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band, and they clothed him with purple, and plaited a crown of thorns, and put it about his head and began to salute him. Can you imagine this? The, the God of heaven, all he'd have to do is move his hand and the world could disappear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is earth? I mean, we're still finding new planets. We're still finding new solar systems. We're still finding new stars. You can even go and name a star after yourself. There's plenty of them. You can name one after every human being on the face of the earth. That's how many stars there are. Think of that. And, and man raises himself up to be able to mock the Son of God like this. It's a scary thing, isn't it? Amen. And they clothed him with purple, planted a crown of thorns, put it upon his head, and begin to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him. One scripture also says, and said, prophesy who's hit you. It was mockery. You know, you think how the Christians will be hated there will be persecution in these last days. There are people that would like to round up every Christian and throw them right into a concentration camp, just like Hitler did. His hatred for the Jews, I want to tell you where that came from. It came from the devil. And that same hatred is alive today. And it will come in the spirit of Antichrist, which is already in the world, and will be revealed uh, upon this planet. And he'll put to death the Christians. We've seen this spirit already work over there in uh, the Mideast and how they took those Christians and put them in a cell and then dumped them down into the water. 
and let them drown. Others, they line up on beaches and cut their heads off. What in the world gets into a man to do such a thing? What kind of hatred can fill a man's heart that he would do such a thing? I want to tell you, it comes straight from hell. And this same spirit is alive. I just thank God we had a president that brings it up and says, when I saw those people going down, you know, there was a hatred toward ISIS and that we needed to wipe it out. And we need to have an understanding that these things come from hell. In verse 19, they smote him upon the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees, worshipped him. <laughs> Dear Lord, and when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put it, his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Verse 28. The scripture was fulfilled which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple, buildest it in three days, save thyself, come down from the cross. Wasn't good enough just hanging him there. They had to mock him even while he hung. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking, said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with Him reviled Him. Oh, I want to tell you something. We've not seen any kind of persecution when you think of what Jesus went through. Right. Why? Because of love. We're loved tonight. I can't give you that kind of love. I want to say I love you tonight. But I can't, I don't know if I, this, this love here, this is some kind of love. That's right. Amen. You know, this is a love Jesus gave himself as he cried to the Father and said, My God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? It all needed to be in print. It needed to be known that God turned his head from him. Why? Because he loved mankind and he wants to deliver mankind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to save and deliver and heal. And he is the pathway and became the perfect sacrificial lamb that we could have church tonight. That we could be cleansed with his blood. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. That I can walk through those doors with a heavy burden on me. Something that's battling me. Something that's heavy on me. Yes. I may not even be able to describe it with my lips. But I can walk in that door and say, I need prayer. I need God. And we can anoint you with oil and believe. And God can come down and break through that oppression. Amen. It can be lifted off your soul. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. God has a plan. And it may be hard for us to understand, but when God sees the blood, when He sees the blood, He will pass over you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And He remembers, hallelujah, that He gave His only begotten Son on our behalf that we might be saved. Praise God. It's amazing, God, how he does things. Today I was in Breezewood and had the chapel out there today. And, and uh, you know, you, you don't know what's going to happen in a day. You may not have anyone on board. You may have a few. Uh, you know, you just don't know. But God knows. 
<laughs> he knows. And it was so powerful. A driver came in and he said he was so tired. He just come in exhausted. He'd had a DUI on his record and none of the big trucking companies would take him because he'd had this years ago on his record. And so he had to get with a little outfit and he said they're just running to death. Just running. He said, I'm so tired. He came on board and he, he said, you know what? My son is a missionary in Asia. And he said, he texted me today and he said, Dad, you're going to receive a blessing today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he came on there and he said, I'm, I'm not where I need to be with God. And he just began to tell me all his troubles. And we prayed. And God heard his prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I think of that missionary, his son, over thousands and thousands of miles away, praying that his dad would receive a blessing today. Hallelujah. Praise and there he gave, recommitted his heart to the Lord. This afternoon, praise God. Praise I said, you call your son, you get him on the phone, or send him a message and tell him, God heard your prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. God Amen. heard your prayers. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Just like that, God has a plan. Amen. And I think of all these requests, you know, some people, you think of the mockeries of Christ. There's people, if they saw us tonight as we gave out our prayer, these people are crazy giving out their requests. You know? That's how the world thinks. They think you're just foolish going through some religious motion, you know. Going through the motions. Just, just the religious fanatic. No, I'm here to tell you. God's here is bent down and listening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you the Bible says he knows the request before they're spoken. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you it's, it's serious business to him. Just as it was with his son. Don't think he took it lightly turning away from his son. No, his heart was broken what had to be done. But oh Jesus, hallelujah, he didn't look away. He didn't call 10,000 angels. He didn't uh, try to get out of it. But he stayed the course hallelujah. and followed through that we might have deliverance. Thank you, Lord. I want you to think of that price tonight. And whatever you're going through or your loved ones, whatever the prayer requests, trade it in tonight. Yes. That was done so I wouldn't have to face it. I wouldn't have to face hell. I wouldn't have to face eternal separation from God. I received, hallelujah, salvation through this wonderful sacrifice. Of Jesus Christ, my Lord, and I can be saved. The disciples were on a boat with Jesus when a tempest arose upon the sea. There seemed no hope, the fear was over.